Então, todos bem dispostos para começarmos? Boa. Então, em nome da Jack Daniels e da Sograp, quero-vos agradecer por estarem aqui, por virem de manhã, uh, despenderem o vosso tempo valioso para, para estar connosco. E vou-vos deixar com ele, crack, <risos> Luís, uh, que vos vai falar de Jack Daniels e vai-vos passar toda a paixão que ele tem. Está bem? 
Obrigado a todos. Até já. Um aplauso. Ah, sim. Um, well, hello. I am this guy, Luis Bustamante. I'm the brand ambassador from Jack Daniels. In English or Espanol? English? English, okay? Okay, cool. All right, so, yeah, I'm the brand ambassador from Jack Daniels, and I'm going to try to make this um, this morning, this Monday morning. They told me, you're going to Algarve, you have a nice weather. Anyway, I don't know. But um, I love to be here. I'm really thankful uh, for the Sograper group and uh, Eduardo and all the team, please. Big applause for them, really, for having me here. So thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So um, I'm not going to make this, you know, I mean, you know already what's Jack Daniels. I mean, how many people here never tried Jack Daniels? There you go. Everybody did, right? Okay. One question. Who doesn't like Jack Daniels? It's okay. You can say it. Who does? No, no, come on, raise up. Who doesn't like it? Okay, get out of here right now. No, <laughs> no I'm just kidding. You know, that's, a, that's an important thing because um, Doug Daniels Tennessee whiskey, I mean, it's cool, it, could be cool, uh, it could be called bourbon, but not really because it has one more step. What actually what defines a Tennessee whiskey like, like, like Doug Daniels is that, that we charcoal mellow it um, through the maple syrup um, charcoal. So that's, that mellows it a little bit. Um, and I'm going to give you the little formula so you can do, make Jack Daniels at home, okay? The formula for Jack Daniels, I'm going to tell you about this, but it, it makes sense, okay? It will make sense later. This is the formula for Jack Daniels, okay? You have corn, you have malted barley, and you have rye, okay? Because everything that I'm going to tell you about the flavors from Jack Daniels comes from here, from this bottle right here, but with a twist, Okay? The thing is that to make Jack Daniels, what we do is, um, well, we'll distill this and then we mature it on these big houses, these barrel houses right here, okay? We put the barrels there and then we choose from each barrel, the ones on top, they have the, the barrels there, they have the whiskey has more wood, in the middle less, and in the bottom floors they have less wood. So those barrels, that's whiskey on those barrels, is very mellow, not that punchy like the, um, like the ones on top. That makes sense, guys? So we take, um, we, make a, we take a mix of those barrels to make Jack Daniels all number seven. However, to do the flavors, those guys over here, you know, those, you know this, right? You've seen it around. Well, who has tried them? Raise hands, come on, you know it. You try them. Okay, if you didn't try them, don't worry, because later on, we're going to chase them, and we're going to have, oh, thank you, thank you. How about a shot of, no, never mind. Uh, okay, uh, <laughs> um, we're going to taste them later on in cocktails and in shots and however you want to you wanna taste them. But those, let me, let me be really honest about this, okay? I never lie. I, I'm very honest. Maybe it's not because I'm very honest. It's because I don't have memory. That's why I never lie. That's, that's a good thing. And I have to be honest, when I was a bartender and... Um, and the people from Jack Daniels came to me, and I mean, I like Jack Daniels since I had hair, so imagine how long it was. And when they brought Jack Daniels honey the first time, I was like, what? Jack Daniels honey? Are you kidding me? Jack Daniels, you know, has been always like this whiskey, like this real whiskey, right? And then big me, Jack Daniels honey? It's like, what? Are you kidding? It's like, I don't know, um, it's like Metallica does a reggaeton song. Right? I mean, I was like, I like Metallica. I don't really like reggaeton. Depends on the time of the night, but I don't really like it. But then, what, what's going on? But what happens if you hear that reggaeton song from Metallica and you like it? You're screwed. Then you're in trouble. I was in trouble. I said, man, those are so good. But then I started to work for Jack Daniels. And then I started to know where this comes from. And let me tell you about this. Do you know that there is a, a picture of a guy in Jack Daniels? In the Jack Daniels bottle, there is a picture of a, of a person. Not many people know that because people don't get, doesn't grab the bottle to read. <laughs> they grab it to drink it, of course. But this guy here um, that you see in, in, the bo in Jack Daniels bottle, that's Jack Daniel. Okay, this guy was pretty wise, and he had, besides the distillery in Lynchburg, Tennessee, in this little town, there's like a 500 people there. Everybody works for Jack Daniels. 
And uh, before prohibition, he started with two bars in the same square of the middle of the, of the little town, okay? One bar was called White Rabbit. The other one in front of it was called Red Duck, okay? The White Rabbit will be a bar that if it was today, it will be a bar, a little, you know, Instagrammer, you know, a little posh kind of thing. And the Red Dog was a little more underground. It's probably what I will be sometimes. But imagine this guy, what he did, it was to cover all the, all the customers possible, either the posh and the underground, right? So he had those two bars. But he realizes, I mean, he had more, um, more spirits than only Jack Daniels, of course. He had a bar, like you guys. Not only have Jack Daniels, you have more whiskeys, of course. And then he realizes that not everybody, like here, not everybody liked Jack Daniels. So he talked to the people that knows about these things, bartenders, and to his bartender say, hey, you guys, not everybody likes Jack Daniels like that. So let's play with it. And then he started to mix it with wines, to mix it with roots, with tea, with juices, with fruits, like honey, like apples, like cinnamon, like many other things. So they started to do that, and people started to like it. And then prohibition came, and those bars closed, and blah, blah, blah. But then what happens? The market... In this century, what happens is that demanded some things that they already know, but with flavors. And then we said at the distillery, wait a minute, do you guys want that? Let me go to the basement. So we went to the basement, we opened a case, and they already have, we already have the recipes for this, for those flavors. So it's not new. It's not something that we said, we're going to sell more Jack Daniels if we put honey on it, or apple, or whatever. No. Already Jack thought about that back in the time. That blows my mind. I mean, he already did it. So then when I tried them, I said, okay, that's why the recipe for this, for these guys are so simple. For example, Jack Daniels honey. We started in 2013. Let me, okay, forget about this, okay, for a minute. What it says here, Jack Daniels, right? And here says honey, right? That's it. <laughs> Nothing else to say. <laughs> it's very honest. It's Jack Daniels and honey. Period. Because that's how they did it back in the days. We actually use all the water that we use in Jack Daniels. For example, Jack Daniels has a 40% uh, degree of alcohol, right? All the flavors have 35 so in Jack Daniels, if we have 40% of alcohol, we have 60% of water. The water that we use for everything in Jack Daniels, we use it from our cave spring hollow, which is a cave that we have our own water. Very pure water. That's why most of the whiskeys in the United States are made in Kentucky and Tennessee, because we have great water there. So we're going to use this water, let's say a liter of water and one kilo of honey. We're going to make a syrup and put it on the Jack Daniels. There you go. Easy. Right? You can do it at home if you want. It's going to taste better this way, though. <laughs> okay? So how do we taste this? We're going to taste it. We can taste it. I, I recommend always that to be really cool, to be perfectly frozen, I mean, to, to keep it in the freezer. We can have it on a shot. Sure. Easy. But how about if we play with it? How, will, how about if we make a piña colada instead of with rum, with honey? Let's play. Let's see how it tastes. How about if we have it in a long drink with, I don't know, with lemon? How about if we made espresso honey? Espresso martini with, yeah, espresso honey. That's my name, yeah. Not really good in names, though. But uh, espresso honey, why not? How about a jacquirinha? Right? Yeah, we can play with it. We can have a shot. That's the itchy thing. But, hey, you can sell better, better and more, maybe, if, we play, if you play with it or not. But sometimes what you're going to find out is if you put on the menu, for example, if you say people uh, to, the, to the customer, it has Jack Daniels, and they're going to go like, ooh, Jack Daniels, that's too strong. Yeah, well, I mean, it's 40 degrees alcohol, like any tequila, any rum, any gin, it's 40 degrees. Why people think that it's too strong sometimes, Jack Daniels? Because the first time they try Jack Daniels is after having 14 gin and tonics, 
four shots of Jagermeister, one shot of tequila, and they said, somebody goes, let's have a shot of Jack Daniels. Sure. Boom. Oh, my God, that's a strong. Right. But if you taste it properly, maybe you find out that it's a really mellow whiskey. But of that rock and roll night, of course, it's going to go like, boom, of course. It's 40 degrees alcohol of a very characteristic whiskey, very special whiskey, very different whiskey. I never say that Jack Daniels is the best whiskey in the world because we all know which one is the best whiskey in the world, right? Which is? Uh -uh. The best whiskey in the world is the one you like the most. It's like your couple. Well, well, maybe. Should be. Okay? So I, I'm lucky enough that I work for the company for the, for the whiskey that I like the most, sure. But I think we have many other options to drink it. Like that else, honey, for example. We're going to have some cocktails there and you can try it. Okay? But then we have Jack Daniels Fire. First of all, it's not too spicy. Okay? You, it doesn't have Tabasco on it. Okay? Because there is, a, there is another whiskeys with cinnamon that maybe are, they're a little too spicy or maybe not. Maybe you guys like them, whatever. But this, in this case, we owe, at, uh, like Jack Daniels Honey, we have a 35% alcohol. And what we do here is we infuse cinnamon, clove, cayenne, some of the herbs that we have there in, in Lynchburg, in Tennessee. We infuse it with Jack Daniels. But in all the three cases, excuse me, with all the three cases, if you see those bottles, they don't say Jack Daniels all number seven fire, right? Why is that? To make Jack Daniels all number seven, we take barrels from every part of the barrel house. From the top barrels, a lot of wood, middle and bottom, as I said before, right? For the flavors, we don't. We only take barrels from the middle of the barrel house down. Because if we choose the ones in the top, probably it will be too much wood and it will cover the flavors that we try to um, do a price here, right? Make sense? Yeah? Are you guys thirsty? Oh my God, it's too early. I mean, already? <laughs> okay, so we have fire and uh, we can have that in a shot, of course. A shot of fire, high intensity night. Sure, you can have it that. But if I tell you Tennessee Mule, right? We can have it with ginger beer, we're gonna have it later on. How about if I tell you about um, a sangria with red wine? Orange juice, right? Lemon soda and Jack Daniels Fire, as easy as that. And we can have, I mean, for tiki cocktails, for example, they work really well. On a long drink, if you want to try it tonight somewhere, that we're going to probably meet later on tonight, if you try a long drink with fire and orange soda, think about it. Oh, man, it's really good if you like it sweet. Really, really good. But you have to try it. How about if you try a mixture, a shot, if you want, with half honey and half fire? I call it love and hate. And it's really, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you about it later in our stand about it, okay? So we can play with those products. Now, with Jack Daniel's apple, okay? That's the last one we had right here. Same idea as uh, Jack Daniel's honey. We have, um, we made ourselves a liquor from the three, different, uh, three different apples and we mixed it with the Jack Daniel's. Then, happens a little bit the same that happened when they, they present me Jack Daniel's honey. They said to me, I already was working for Jack Daniel's and they said to me, we're gonna launch Jack Daniel's apple. And I said, okay, yeah, apple and whiskey, that matches. Yeah, that makes sense. And then they said, we're gonna launch it? with tonic. I was like, what? Tonic and whiskey? Who likes that? Who likes that? Who tried once whiskey with tonic? You like it? Exactly. Like, no way, man. Okay, we're going to crash. Then what happens? They send me downstairs to put some ice and some tonic. We mix it at the office. I tried it and I said, damn it. Again. They did it again. I found out people that doesn't like whiskey and doesn't like tonic, I have a Jack Daniels apple with tonic, and they like it. 
really funny, but it's really good. I actually, I'm telling you, I like old fashions. I like uh, boulevardiers, I like strong, uh, strong cocktails, I like Manhattans, I like all that. I do drink apple and tonic, I like it. Refreshing, only 35 degrees alcohol, easy going, maybe for the afternoon, after works. How about a cocktail, apple sour, you can have a little less sugar on it, which is more healthy, a little more fit, and it works. I made a cocktail, for example, um, that is, has two parts of apple, one part of, uh, I don't know, Noily Pratt, um, some dry vermouth, and a splash of soda with an olive and a slice of lemon. Really easy to make, how do they call it? Apelitivo. Yeah, I know, that, that was good, that was good. But yeah, I mean, you can play with it and have many, many things. How about a mojito with apple? How about if we play with things instead of just having shots, for example? Now, the point of this masterclass was to tell you about why in Jack Daniels we make flavors. Because some, sometimes in some masterclasses they tell me, okay, Luis, please tell me if you're going to launch Jack Daniels strawberry. And then I get, you know, shivers. I, say, ah, I don't know. But if one thing I know, I don't know if we're going to launch it or not. I don't know that because we have many, many flavors back in the basement. I don't know if we're going to launch it or not, but what I know from my experience is that if we launch it, it's going to be a good product. That doesn't mean you have to like it. Maybe your customer will. But it's going to be a good product. Why? Because you have the guarantee that for more than 150 years, we've been doing whiskey. And we know that I mean, it's, we're, doing, you, we're getting pretty good at that, actually. I said before that Jack Daniels maybe not, is not the best whiskey in the world, but they gave us seven times the award of best whiskey in the world, which is cool, thank you. But the thing is that we have to try it with a little, with a little bit of care, you know, let's taste it differently, and let's see if it happens, if you actually like it. Now, for example, one thing that I, that I believe is that, that we do Jack Daniels from many, many, many things, but it is actually the most selling whiskey in the world, is the, in how many people go to your bar and say, Jack Daniels and Coke? They ask for the brand, which is interesting. You know, by the way, I don't know, no, it's not here. You know it's the second brand more tattooed in the world? How many people has tattoos here? Oh, yeah. How many people will tattoo themselves? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Um, any brand. Why, why, why would people tattoo themselves a brand? Maybe because it has something to relate on. I said it was the second brand most tattooed in the world. The first one is Harley Davidson. And a lot of people go, oh, yeah, yeah. Like that. Okay, don't drink and drive, first of all. Okay, but... It has, it has something that is a uh, character, both. Many other brands too, okay? But it has character. Why do we have character on that? Because when you make something that is iconic, that is genuine, actually, when you make something that is genuine, it becomes iconic. That's what I would like to say, right? And it is genuine. We've been doing crafted whiskey for more than 150 years. We're gonna still doing it, now with honey, with apple, and with cinnamon, with fire. Questions? Go ahead. So you mentioned flavors. Yes. Could you give us uh, a flavor that you thinking that Jack is thinking of coming out soon? Or? How much money do you have on you? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I do not. I do not. To be honest, I tell you, I'm very honest. I don't know if you're going to go with more flavors or not. I don't know. I have no idea. Because you mentioned you have a lot of flavors in the basement. Yeah. Not that I know of. For now, we don't have any, any news that we're gonna launch another flavor. I don't, I don't know. But that's what I told you before. I mean, one thing for sure is that we launch another flavor is gonna be well done. It's gonna be a good finished product. It doesn't matter if you like it or not, that's the point that I really want to make sure. I mean, we, I'm not here to make you think that Jack Daniels is the best. I just want you to know what Jack Daniels is about and why Jack Daniels put on the market some flavors. 
because it's weird. It's, you know, like metallic and reggaeton thing. It's weird. It's like, why? why? Because we want to reach as many customers as possible, like Jack Daniels thought when, they had these two, when he had these two bars. Because some, sometimes, okay, remember the first time you had a beer? Yeah, I know, it was time ago, but remember? It was like, oh my God. And now it's like, oh yeah. So sometimes, it depends how you taste it, it depends the moment, it depends how you start having a beer. Maybe you start liking more whiskeys. Not only Jack, but the world of whiskey, which is fabulous, like other spirits that we're going to enjoy later on at the, uh, here at the, at the fair. The thing is that we have to love all the spirits, all the effort and work that all the people is, is putting to do this. These spirits and other spirits that we're going to enjoy. Okay? So I think the, the best thing about all the spirits, and especially with Jack Daniels, are those, three, those, those four pillars right here. Integrity, independence, Loyalty, right? And to be an authentic. I mean, we are proud, and people is really proud to, that back there in the distillery, to put Jack Daniels on those flavors. It gives a seal of quality, I believe. It's not because I say it, it's not because they say it, it's because we have history behind us that give us that, um, that back, that shoulders to say, hey, you know, maybe you like it, maybe not, but it's Jack. It's Uncle Jack, right? And by the way, by the way, really important for my boss because then he thinks I do things, okay? The, the, that's my Instagram. We have some, um, some recipes, some videos with some many, many recipes with, uh, with flavors and with all the Jack Daniels portfolio. But if you are thirsty, I believe it would be a good idea if you don't, if you don't have any more questions. If you do, please. Tell me, don't be shy. There you go. You want a shot, don't you? <laughs> go ahead. So you, you work for Jack Daniels. So yeah. Besides Jack Daniels, what would give you another bourbon that you would say is as better quality or as good quality as Jack? For your tasting. Like for my tasting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boot for reserve. Sorry? Boot for reserve. I mean, oh, it's in brown foreman too. <laughs> but I, not really. I mean, um, and that's a good question. That's a good question. I, I really like, okay, that sounds weird. I like old, old spirits. Okay, I'm very spiritual. <laughs> uh, but the thing is that you, it depends of, for what you want it. For example, you know Gentleman Jack? You know Gentleman Jack is very, it's, um, it's Jack Daniels with a suit. That's what I like to say. Okay. Would you make, for example, an old fashioned with Gentleman Jack? Why not? If you want an old-fashioned, it's a little bit softer. But if you want it more bigger, more strong, use a single barrel, for example. So it depends on what cocktail and how you feel that moment. People s tell me sometimes, okay, Luis, what is the, which Jack Daniels you like the most? I say, and I always answer, okay, what time is it? Who am I with? That's going to depend. Because if you give me, for example, a Bloody Mary, instead of vodka, use Jack. Have you ever tried that? Try it. If, I ask, if you ask me at 2 in the morning, high-intensity party for the Bloody Mary, I might not have that. I might have just a Jack and Coke. Why not? So it, it, will, be depend. it, will, it, will, it will depend. For example, if I want, for, um, I don't know, a Boulevardier, for example, I will use Woodford, Woodford Rye. Why not? Sure. Yeah, or a Jack Daniels too. Oh, that's the thing. Play. Play. Be brave. Play with this. Let's see how it tastes. It's not only for shots. Okay? It's only, it's, it's made for you to play with it. You want to play? Let's play. I want to play. Where is Eduardo? Eduardo. There you go. We're going to make some cocktails here. We're going to start... For a Tennessee Mule, yeah, I really put an effort on, on finding the name, okay? The Tennessee Mule, really easy. You're going to use directly on a mug. Are we good on, on timing? Are we okay? Yeah? Okay. Very easy to make, as you see. Mug and ice. So far, so good. 
Yeah? Okay, good. Now, then we're going to use orange juice. About 4 CL around that. Lemon juice, which is this one. Correct? That's the lemon juice. This one. Yeah. About 2 CL. Then I mix it a little bit. Yeah, he's checking. Then we have like four or five CL of the McDonald's fire. And ginger beer. Hey, that was cool, huh? Sorry. Thank, thank God that worked. <laughs> yeah. That was risky. <laughs> Then we can garnish it with a little bit of cinnamon. Burn it a little bit. You have to do that, okay? Just <laughs> if not, it doesn't, it doesn't taste the same. <laughs> so you can use that. <clears throat> and Okay, do you know how many people ask you for a Moscow meal in your place? Many people, it's like, oh, another Moscow meal, oh, another mojito. Okay, hey, you like Moscow meals? Let me show you something different. I don't like Jack Daniels. That's fine, don't worry. It's not Jack Daniels, Jack Daniels fire. <laughs> it is different, it is. Actually, it tastes, it, it's not as spicy. It's, it has the Jack Daniels background, but it gives you that smell of it of, with, uh, with the cinnamon. I think it's really good. I don't know. Edu, you want some? You should try it. I make this sacrifice. Oh, your poor thing, yeah. Yeah, there you go. And then, how is it? I'm going to do it like in the TV. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then I will go like, there you go, right? Okay, now, how about if we do the espresso honey? Yeah, that's another great name, huh? Yeah. I, I, I took like 10 seconds to think about that name. So we have honey right here, right? We have another one. Okay. Some people, for example, at the bar say, "I don't want to make cocktails because it takes too much effort." Blah blah, whatever. Sure, it's true. If you have a lot of work, but let me tell you, if you have a shaker in your bar and you have coffee, that's all you that's all you need. Check this out. I mean, as easy as that. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Same amount of coffee as that down as honey, okay? Well, maybe a little more. And then we have the coffee. We use, no, use cold brew because it was too expensive to have here a coffee machine, okay? A little more. And then we're going to use coffee liquor. Then use half. Okay? And a little more. <laughs> okay. So, we're going to give you the horse shake so it makes the foam. Okay? I can't hear any applauses here. Oh, come on! <laughs> I needed an ego boost, okay? So that's <laughs> you know how bartenders, we are like, you know, we have so much ego. That's something we have to work on, okay? But I'm still working on it, okay? And we can serve it, for example, on a coupette like this. We can serve it on ice on an old fashioned, whatever you like. I'm trying to think that sometimes I'm a gentleman, sometimes, and I like to have it on a coupette, but if you want it on, a, on ice, that's, that's really good too. So, how difficult was that? Okay, Luis, you came all over from Barcelona to do this, man? I mean, yeah, I mean, 
but how easy is to make this at your bar and have a good experience to your customer with Jack Daniels Honey, for example, right? They ask you for a coffee at the end of dinner. I want a dessert. Imagine, at your restaurant, the kitchen is full with desserts. They are up to here. I said, okay, don't worry, guys. I'm going to make a dessert. It's going to take a little longer. But how about if I make you a coffee, a different coffee? A coffee with a tuxedo. There you go. And then you can garnish it with the beams of coffee. Easy. Actually, I'm going to have that. Oh my God, did I do that? <laughs> I still have it. Now, easy, right? Think about the piña colada with honey, for example. Try that at home. Try it at home, it's not gonna explode. You can do it, okay? Now, with the apple. I don't know if you tried the Jack Daniels apple with tonic, apple tonico, you, you, you tried it, some of you? or with ginger ale, or with Sprite, or whatever, but um, with, I like it with tonic. If you try it, I mean, it's gonna blow your mind, really, really. Even better than with a shot, okay? But the apple sour actually works really well, too. Let's do this really fast. Obviously, if I say apple sour, you already know what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna just put some egg white, gives a little foam. Less syrup, I mean, it depends on the taste, but less syrup than a normal sour, because Jack Daniel's apple already has the sweetness of the liqueur, of course, right? We have some lemon juice. And apple. What? <laughs> it's fruit. <laughs> uh, a Jack Daniels company always uh, try to recommend a responsible drinking. Okay, Just, we we actually do. We, we want we want people the next morning to have a good memory of the night before. Okay, so. She liked it. Ooh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> Damn. I'm gonna get fired. Um, we can put it on ice. See, it wasn't too much. And we can garnish it, of course, with an apple, which will make sense, or with a twist of lemon, which I will, I'll, also will make sense. And uh, really refreshing, low alcohol volume, is those three guys are 35. So it's not whiskey, because it's under 40 degrees, but it's whiskey liqueur. Which whiskey? Jack, exactly. Now, there is some other, um, some other uh, brands also that they have also that too. Um, we are very proud to put the name of the whiskey we use. And uh, I think that's why it tastes the way it tastes. So we have something we can, we can have, for example, in the after dinner as a dessert, if you like a little um, citric. We, ha we can have this after dinner also, after lunch, if you want. You can have that at night. The thing is that I re what I really, really want to make you think about is how you can play with this. Is, is there already some ideas that you might use it at your bars that you never thought about? I think it's, I think it's gonna be useful. And if you want to try the love and hate, you will remember me. 
Because let me tell you, it gives you, at the end when you taste it, it's going to leave your mouth with the perfect mood for the perfect kiss. Think about it. We have the sweetness and we have the spiciness. Okay, there you go. So, I mean, I'll got it. I mean, I feel that way. So, um, the point, the point is, oh, and if you try, somebody's thinking, what about if we mix the three of them just to go crazy? I try them. Apple pie. It tastes just like apple pie. And it makes also, you know, we have the Portuguese um, flag, we have the Mexican flag, we can play with it. Anyway, um, I hope this was useful, guys. Any more questions? Any questions? Things that you want to share? No? You think it was useful? Obrigado. Talk to me. Nós temos aqui uh, um tasting de apple sour. O que é que eu vos vou pedir? Que começamos por aquelas filas ali, se quiserem vir provar. Nós não temos muitos, tivemos aqui um pequeno percalço com o sifão. Podem vir primeiro as pessoas dali, depois aqui do centro e depois ali, para não ser muito confuso. E também tentem uh, beber aqui para não sujar os sofás, está bem? Foi um pedido de organização. Outra das coisas, eu quero convidar-vos para depois passar ali no nosso stand para beberem cocktails, para falar connosco. Estamos lá para isso, está bem? Muito Please obrigado do. a todos. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.